adjust the cooling set points to reflect that. So I'm going to go back to my uh, IDF editor and start from my mix mode model. And I'm going to save this as 25 mix mode with ceiling fans. I'm going to go down to the equipment and add fans by copying my equipment. I'm going to duplicate it and then rename it as ceiling fans. And we want it for zone one. We're going to want to make a new schedule for this, so we'll hold up on that. Instead of a, uh, the design level, I'm going to use this as a, as a watts per square meter. Um, and so I'm going to change this to watts per area. And let's use 2 watts per square meter for the ceiling fans. That's uh, relatively typical for a high efficiency ceiling fan. So we've got the power. Uh, now we need the time. And the time is going to be defined by the schedule. It's currently set to the equipment schedule, but we need to make a new schedule um, to account for the ceiling fan use. And actually probably the best way of visualizing when this schedule should be is to take a look at um, the original run that we did, um, probably this one with five air changes per hour. And um, we can see that the fans would be useful anytime that the interior is going to overheat. Um, if you have enough airflow with natural ventilation, then you won't need the fans. But fans also don't use very much energy to simplify things. Let's just assume the fans are going to run for this entire period. So from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. from mid-March to November. Let's make... I'm going to use the natural ventilation schedule. So I'm going to call this the ceiling fans schedule. And I'm going to delete this one. We'll start in May 15th for all days from 8 a.m. until uh, 9 p.m. From May 15th until November 1st, we want the fans on from 8 o'clock to 9 p.m. like that and then from November 1st to December 31st we want them off so these are already set to off so all we have to do now is, is delete these objects down here so this is going to turn this is a simple schedule but um, it's a little bit faster to go through for this tutorial. You guys can do this in as much detail as you wish. Okay, so that's my ceiling fan schedule. So don't forget to then go back and set your ceiling fans to that schedule. There it is. So we've got the ceiling fan. That'll reflect the um, energy use, the ceiling fans use. The only thing less left to do then is to um, increase the cooling set points accordingly. So we get another 2 degrees Celsius of perceptual cooling from the ceiling fans. So whenever we've got the cooling system on, we can uh, take advantage of, of those ceiling fans, that air movement, and, um, and increase that set point. So um, we've already got cooling setbacks here uh, until March. And our ceiling fans come on in May. So we're going to skip down here to the May part of the schedule. And from 6 to 9 p.m., we've, got, uh, we've already got the schedule uh, set to 31. Actually, that's pretty high. I think we did that because of the natural ventilation. So I'm going to keep that as it is there. I think that does reflect uh, pretty nicely where the, um, what the ceiling fans would do. And then if we go down to through June 30th, uh, these days here, until uh, from 6 to 9, instead of having a set point of 24, let's make this a set point of 26 degrees. That's 2 degrees of cooling that we're getting out of it. Now, during this period, we don't have natural ventilation because the out outdoor air is relatively humid. So this is just going to increase air movement inside. 
um, for, until September 1st, we've still got this um, high set point, so we're going to leave it there. And then our ceiling fans go off in November or December 15th. We still have this high set point. So let's see now what the effect of this is. I'm going to save this and simulate it. Okay, so we've got this uh, simulated. I pasted in the variables into the dashboard. Let's take a look at the data here. Uh, you can see in the graph that it doesn't really, it's hard to tell that anything changed. That In fact, this bit of air conditioning here uh, did get a little bit smaller, uh, but we only increased the, the cooling set point by two degrees in that range there. I wonder if you can also see, now the, the equipment use is so small here that uh, you don't really see the the increase in equipment use that uh, that the fans are using, the ceiling fans that is. And you wouldn't expect to see any difference here in thermal autonomy because uh, during those periods when the cooling system is on, um, it's going to still be the same. So the the biggest difference as you'll see is in the overall energy use and uh, for that the cooling should be slightly less and the equipment should be slightly more. I'm going to output these and save them or export them as, as PNGs and then uh, lay them out in InDesign. So here we have the first set of runs uh, on the left, the baseline with no ventilation, where we had an extremely overheated zone um, and we were able to um, see where the periods of higher temperature and lower humidity existed. Then we ran with uh, five air change per hour ventilation rates for a constant fan. And we're able to see then how much the, um, what the, the possibility for natural ventilation might be. We also could see that the, there were times when even with more um, ventilation, the outside temperature is higher than the inside, and so there wasn't really the possibility of uh, using that. If you wanted it to be cool, you'd need to use um, air conditioning. So then we looked at the energy use and the comfort with ceiling fans and natural ventilation. So on the left you see the mixed mode operation with natural ventilation here, uh, showing heating and cooling use. And then on the right-hand side, we see the heating, uh, sorry, the indoor air temperature relative to the comfort zone, and those periods where we have uh, heating, where we have cool, uh, where we have natural ventilation, where we have cooling, uh, we have more natural ventilation, and then back to heating mode again. And um, and you can also see during those times when the the set points are for the thermostat are higher. Um, how it impacts the potential um, thermal autonomy. And as well as we can see when uh, the airflow is increased because of the windows um, in this airflow chart. So please lay these out nicely in InDesign and spend some time annotating them so that we can understand these different modes of operation and what the impacts for comfort and energy are. Thank you.